This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ramika Vincent Leary and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. Life is full of decisions that can prove to be game changers, but we must be willing to take that first step. Have you ever thought of applying for a PSC scholarship? With over 200 options available, the possibilities are endless. During this special edition of Pensacola State Today, we'll be highlighting two of those scholarships the African-American Memorial Endowment, and Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins' Live Your Dream Scholarship. So then we'll take you on a journey of significant triumphs for past and present awardees and culminate with our special recognition for 2022 recipients. There's no time like the present, and these students took that first step. Who knows? You could be next. To get the conversation started, I'm happy to welcome Dr. Ed Meadows, president of Pensacola State College. He's joined by Andrea Krieger, executive director of institutional development, and Dr. Tony Anderson Steele, chair of PSC's Black History Multicultural Committee. And we'll also find out a little bit more about what you do. But Dr. Meadows, let's start with you. The importance of applying for scholarships, we cannot stress that enough, right? No, we can't. And the, the, the good thing about our scholarships at Pensacola State is if you go online uh, and, and apply for schol a scholarship, you've applied for all scholarships that you're entitled to receive. Our software matches up the student and their uh, respective uh, grade point averages, uh, their financial needs, uh, the discipline that, that they're uh, enrolling in, and all the scholarships that our foundation and our institution yes. offer are aligned with that student for consideration. And it's a blanket application, right, Andrea? It is, it's <coughs> one application, so we're not gonna ask them to fill out 300 different applications. No. They go online, they can use their phone. Uh, it doesn't take much time, but it does open up a world of possibility for them. And well, there's only two exceptions of that. One is the President's Scholarship, and the other is a excellent, academic excellence scholarship. Uh, where there are separate applications, but all the others, the hundreds of other scholarships, yes, definitely. you apply one time. Good to know. So, Andrea, let's get into the history of these two sure. scholarships. I know our audience wants to hear. Well, I'll tell you, it's really, it's quite a blessing to have both of these. And one of them, the first one you mentioned, the African American Memorial Endowed Scholarship, that is actually celebrating its 25th year this year. So, 25 years of helping students succeed. What's amazing about that is it's endowed. And so while it has 59,000, a little over 59,000 in the endowment, the earnings from that have already been able to award out over $39,000 in scholarships. So into perpetuity, that's, that endowment will enable students um, to succeed here at Pensacola State College by giving them that first chance, that opportunity. The second scholarship, the Garrett T. Wiggins, uh, Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins Live Your Dream Scholarship, it is not currently endowed, but it was started in 2005, and it has been responsible for $46,000 worth of awards. Now, the difference is, once that's, it, that's out, it's gone. Yes, it's gone. It's, it's not anymore, but both serve a very important role. I mean, we want students to pursue excellence, but we want them to live their dream. And this, these both just offer unique opportunities. Uh, and the fact that your um, volunteers have worked on this this past year just means more opportunities for students and more scholarship recipients than ever in both of those categories. Absolutely, and speaking of the years, Dr. Tony Anderson Steele, you've been at the college for quite some time, and let's talk about your involvement as chair as the, of the Black History Multicultural Committee. Well, I've, I've been the chair since 2004, and um, prior to the pandemic, we were quite active in uh, being able to not only work together here at the college, but to also become friends. Yes. And so it's, it's like networking with people you work for here at the college and with 
And so um, we generally uh, plan events, multicultural type events and black events at the college. And uh, we use the students and we use the staff and the faculty to help us uh, coordinate those events and to work those events and to help plan those events. And so those are the things that we have always enjoyed doing. Uh, as we try to come out of the pandemic, we hope that we're able to successively get our audience back and have everyone start to come back to enjoy the events that we have at the college and be more aware of um, how to um, to enhance yes. the multicultural of this community and of the college. So very important. And speaking of unity, mm -hmm. we'd like to take you back to 2020 to our scholarship banquet. We had a very interesting speaker, dynamic guy named Rodney Jones. He is the founder of New World Believers. And we want you to take a listen to this clip. You got mama struggling, daddy's out juggling, trying to get money any way they can. And even then, ends won't meet. And it's a fact, every night hungry kids won't eat. Hard times is the way of life. Make a man contemplate killing off his kids and his wife. And Lord knows that ain't right. But he in a different mind frame because his mind changed from the pain that he feels coming from the sound that he hears. It's his kids shedding tears before they go to sleep. Because now the thing that he has so that they can sit and eat now, this bit of thing, it's so extreme, it brings pain, he cannot bear. So he pulls his pistol from his pocket and screams out, life, it just ain't fair in the ghetto. Late at night on the pipe, crackheads up like they're working nine to five. Always watching me, watching you, watching him, ain't lying. Waiting on the perfect time so they can creep. Pull a B&E while you in your house sleep now. Can you imagine why you dream crack fiends tiptoeing through your home and they don't care because you there? They just trying to get something, go and get their smoke on. Now that's crazy, man, they ain't lying, but you see they high half the time and that makes them blind and distraught and dark thoughts start to cross their mind. And it's a fact, like crack, they stacked in the ghetto by the bundle. So don't get shook when you look and see the ghetto is a crackhead jungle. Bang, 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 gunshots heard every night. Loud screams, sirens, and glass breaking from a fight. And blue lights, they're a familiar sight. Because every week, somebody laid coal in the streets. And every week, people gather around try to peep at somebody's son stretched out, put to sleep. Now that's a shame, man found slain, said the 6 o'clock news. But that's life in the ghetto. Somebody win, somebody lose. So remarkable. And Dr. Tony Anderson Steele, I know that you work closely with the African American Student Association and what Rodney Jones said, so impacting, lending credence even more so regarding the importance of having these black history multicultural events. Mm -hmm. Talk about that for just a, a moment. Well, again, prior to the pandemic, the African American Student Association was absolutely off the chart and doing everything that they possibly could to be inspired, motivated, and to network across the state. Since the pandemic, we have not done much. Uh, we did, however, have our first very successful Black History celebration uh, on the 16th. Uh, we packed the house with the community and with the students, and the students actually ran the program and planned the program. And so we're getting back into activities. I just thought the other day that uh, it's time for it. We've been Zooming. Our A meetings have been have, via yes. Zoom. And so I just thought to myself the other day, I said, we need to come back face to face. Uh, so I'm thinking about having us join each other face to face, which is indeed inspiring uh, starting fall. Sounds good. Now, mm -hmm. Dr. Meadows, back to you. The Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins Live Your Dream Scholarship. We have aspirations for that, don't we? <clears throat> Certainly. And before we talk about uh, the Wiggins Scholarship, I want to commend uh, Dr. Tony Anderson Steele. She was one of the, inst the individuals instrumental in establishing the African American Endowed Memorial Scholarship. Yes, indeed. Many, many years ago. So, mm -hmm. Dr. Anderson Steele, thank you. Thank you. And looking at the person here responsible for the 100 for 100 campaign, I thank you, Dr. Leary, as well. Yes. You know, the Alumni Association of this fine institution has a matching scholarship program for endowments. And the two criteria are that they uh, do something noteworthy for the community and or they do something noteworthy for the college. 
Dr. Wiggins meets both of those criteria. I would hate to think that sometime into the future we would fail to raise money one year where no student would be awarded the uh, Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins scholarship. So I think this is a prime time mm -hmm. to announce that I would like for us to pursue this matching dollar endowment for Dr. Wiggins in his honor. $12,500 raised will be matched with $12,500 from our Alumni Association. I will personally make the request that the Alumni Association approve uh, this scholarship once we get to $12,500. And you know, I've done a phenomenal job this year, and I know the community will respond to endowing a scholarship that will have a lasting effect on the well-being of our uh, minority community in Northwest Florida that carries Dr. Wiggins' legacy and his memory into the future. And we are excited about it, aren't we, Dr. Tony? Looking yes, forward to because it. I'm in that process where we get to award the money. Yes. And so I have more money to award. How about that? That sounds <laughs> I'm great. I'm looking forward to it. Now, Andrea, speaking of awarding money, I know that you have some success stories. You hear from students, don't you? Oh, we hear from students all the time, and I was thinking about the video clip you just showed because I think the it doesn't take much to inspire hope in our students and these two scholarships do just that. And in just reading the thank you notes from the students, it is clear that these two scholarships are having the kind of effect that change lives and change communities. And so it's, it's very exciting to think about continuing the legacy that Dr. Wiggins had by endowing his scholarship to help more students. Absolutely. And we are in such full agreement. Any parting words, just a few moments left in the segment? Well, you don't Harris. have to eat the elephant with one bite. No. So <laughs> you start in successional steps. Uh, so I, I feel sure that um, within the next two to three years, we will certainly be able to raise $12,500. That becomes a $25,000 endowed scholarship in memory of Dr. Wiggins. And none of our matching scholarships have ended with the $25,000. We, we, we have some that are approaching $200,000 and $100,000 because people continue to give to those alumni scholarships that is named in honor of significant individuals yes representing achievement at Pensacola State and Northwest Florida. We are so excited. Many thanks to all of you for joining me in Thank this you segment. Me. You're welcome. Now, folks, as we head to break, we want to remind you of a familiar face, attorney Aaron Watson from the Watson firm PLLC. He was last year's Ames Wiggins Physical Awards sponsor. And you'll hear he's a man of many talents. He's a member of Inglewood Baptist Church, where the Reverend Larry Watson Jr. is pastor. Listen to him sing the special rendition of Lord, I Want to Say Thank You. We'll be back right after this. Lord, I want to say thank you. Come on, come on. Is that all right? Due to COVID-19, we didn't host a 2022 scholarship banquet, but we were able to recognize our recipients in a special way. We'll reveal them later in the show, but first we'd like to welcome a phenomenal person who has assisted us in our efforts, Daryl Nelson, owner of Favor Flavor Seafood Restaurant, which is located at 2005 West Jordan Street in Pensacola, Florida. 
Guess what? Favor Flavor is the 2022 Ames Wiggins Physical Awards sponsor. We'll delve into that a little bit later, but first I must say you definitely have a heart for Pensacola State College and our students. Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, I cannot thank you enough, and our recipients join me in that as well. But we're going to get straight to the food. I joined Daryl and his brother Marcus a short time ago at Favor Flavor Seafood Restaurant, and we cooked up a little something in the kitchen. Take a look. Hello, folks. One of the hottest ticket items on my bucket list has been to cook in the kitchen of Favor Flavor Seafood Restaurant, and now my dream has become a reality. So I'm joined by the tag team duo, the brothers, the chefs, Daryl and Marcus. All right. So how are you doing, guys? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing great. Tell us what we're cooking today. We, we are cooking today our we're almost world famous lobster big box. It's a bit of a seafood boil. We've got uh, lots of moving parts to the seafood Tell boil. Tell us about the moving parts. You have snow crab, big jumbo snow crab, huge colossal 1620 shrimp, um, lobster tails, corn, potato, and egg today. And we'll do it all in our in our almost famous. We do all of our um, seasonings in house. So this is our own. Seafood boil recipe in here. We'll be doing that in there. We've got our own topping seasoning to go on, and we have our own in-house seasoned butter that we put on. So everything is from in favor flavor. We don't use any outside people's stuff. So. <laughs> All right, so let's get this party started. So what's the first step? And tell me what I can do. Okay, so the first step would be the longest of everything is to get this lobster tail in. That right. is a beautiful main lobster tail. Sure we'll is. get it down. Can um, I help you with the shrimp? You can help with the shrimp. Where do I put those? We can put the shrimp right here, Ms. Leary. You want me to pour them in like that? Pour them on in. Right Get in, in there and drop oh, them right there. There you go. go. All right, go. all right. <laughs> and now we'll let this catch up for a second. Just let that catch up because these two are going to take a little longer than this. So this sauce, let's talk a little bit about this buttery concoction here. So my buttery concoction, actually, this stuff comes from my dad. My dad is really the man behind the madness with all these recipes. They were mostly handed down from my great grandmother down to my grandmother and my dad and then so forth yes. on to me. And he showed me one night how to cook these really awesome shrimp. I took his recipe and I said, I tell you what, dad. I'm gonna do something with this. And I tweaked it my own way. And his is a bit different, but this is still his sauce. So we're yeah. kudos right. to dad. Kudos yeah. to dad. Dad's in Pop New in. Orleans. He's from He's New the man. Orleans. <laughs> Daryl Senior, we love you. Thank you, man. Yeah. I love that stuff. So we have some lemon here, and I noticed that we have, is this a roux? What exactly is this? This is another butter this is sauce. sauce. This is a so butter this sauce. is our spicy butter sauce. So we have, um, <laughs> since we come up with that one, a lot of people like spicy. They say, can I have spicy? What about exactly. me? I want spicy. So I say, I'll tell you what, we'll go in the kitchen and we'll come up with our own sauce. We don't like to outsource anything. We like to, we like to get everything Always from scratch. All natural. Original <laughs> recipes, all of these are. So this is our very own spicy butter sauce. We're gonna put some on top of the seafood at the end. That okay. way you guys, and you get to taste it, they I'm, get to see it, and you can you tell can them how, how good excited. it is. <laughs> so Marcus, I want to know how the brothers decided to open up the restaurant in the first place. Well, thanks to him, he's the brains. He really came up with the concept. Um, I was somewhere else working at another local restaurant, and he came up with a great idea that I really liked, a plan, and we executed it. And the food he has is delicious. He gave me the recipe, and I execute that recipe for him. Especially this right here, what we were talking about earlier. Definitely. The spicy sauce. Spicy it is, sauce. It is so I'm going to awesome. have Miss Leary. I'm going to have, I hate to cut you guys off, but I'm going to have you you to get the crab. Okay. And we're going to drop the Put crab right over there. on this side. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, get do it all it. down in there. So the way we came up. I'll talk up, to you later. <laughs> <laughs> the way we come up with this was really my wife pressing me. This was something, instead of backyard barbecues, we always done crab boils. My family's from New Orleans. My dad, whole side of the family's from New Orleans. He's stationed out in Jacksonville in the Navy. And we, every time we go, we do a seafood boil. And he cooked the best seafood boil. And he taught me. And my wife was like, hey, why don't you go and do this on your own? And I said, no, I, I want to work. I want to push the <laughs> clock. And she said, no, Working you don't do that. Movie. And I said, OK, honey, I'll try it. We started this thing, and it just took blew off. Up. It blew up. So let's talk about this mural that we're all standing in front of because there's a lot of color going on back here. 
Mm -hmm. So the mural, um, shout out to Carter J. Gatson is who painted this mural. But this is something that I had in my head. It was for my trips from Pensacola to New Orleans. Um, we would take these trips to go see my dad. And this was like back and forth. I would stare out of that car window going down the street. And these were the things that I saw. So I tried to blend our city with, you know, my, my summertime yes. city, New Orleans. So we have all of the, the uh, pen, we got the jazz guy up jazz, here, you yeah. know, that screams New Orleans. And he's blowing out a song of Pensacola. You got all of our local landmarks. You got the beach, you got the Blue Angels, you got the fishing pier. You've got the new bridge. You've got even the white crossover at Bayview Park. Um, yeah, we've got the, it, and then it starts to go into New Orleans. Well, you don't forget the beach ball, no, but the, the, ball. the big ferry out in the Mississippi River. You got the backdrop of the over. city of New Orleans. You got the, um, we've got even a Superdome down on the end that you guys probably can't see. But Mr. Gatson really put his all in all into that. And I hate to get it's it all off course, but let's start. Well, let's get back to Pensacola up. because we all need right. to start plating this thing up. <laughs> let's check those papers. Right? Let's see how it we're going. Oh my goodness, they look great. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Corn. Corn. Could you step over some with sure, me? Sure, sure. And we can. Let me get another pan for you. That might help. And it's always good too okay. to time any food you put into your spice water. You don't want to overcook anything. Everything has to be perfect. Go ahead, Marcus. Give them a little less. Exactly. Especially your potatoes. They can break up so any time. So we have time. the potatoes going in there <laughs> with everything perfect. else. And yes. the crab legs will be the last thing. Crab oh, we, we can't legs. forget about the lobster. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. And your crab legs, which are pre-cooked. So your crab legs, you really just heat and serve. As long as you get them up to temp, 165 degrees, they will be ready to go. Um, they're soaking in our seasonings. I think they need their own pan. There you go. Don't use that one. Let's use this, Let's use this one. So they're okay. soaking in all of our seasonings. And it's getting up the temp. And when it gets that season down in there and gets up the temp, we can build a boil. So that's so all we're going to step Time over here. Come on over here. Let's build this. So we'll let Chef Marcus, you get over and yes. you start doing the potato work. And what we want to do with potatoes, we're going to leave them whole. We're going to leave yeah, these leave whole. Them whole. You leave them whole. Even this so we leave right the here. potatoes whole. Yes. Yes. All we want to do is we want to have these going around. There you go. That over there. I want her to place this over here. I want her to get her hands dirty. OK. Fine with me. Go. So let's get the potatoes <laughs> on here. What about the corn? Yep, that too. Start dropping shrimp. Dropping some shrimp up yes. here, make and, it look nice and, and pretty. And what you want to do is keep your tails up. Keep your tails up. Always Thank you. Tails Always up. keep your tails up. All righty, on the shrimp. Learn something new every we day, don't grab we? Them. <laughs> then we grab the tails. Yes. Uh, and now, right here. let's get a little bit of seasoning. Go this is it. our own house blend of seasoning. There you go. This is uh, made by Chef Daryl, right so in the house. So what's in there? Is it a secret recipe? It, it's a <laughs> blend of our own secret spices and herbs. So um, let's put a do little. Do that last. Do that last. Do, do that, that a little last. bit on And we don't want to say because we don't want nobody cooking it at home. Yeah. Come here and get it. <laughs> Definitely. This. this is a garlic butter sauce that Chef Marcus is. It doing. is beautiful. Awesome. It looks so pretty. And you know, we don't have it on the shelves in the store, but you can come inside here and buy it. Correct. So next, last just but not least, just a little, little bit. Just like this. You want just to Just a tiny it. bit, right? You want to do it just like this. Like, like this. Yeah, yeah. All right, just for garnish. All right, so now that we have all the ingredients here, the finished product, what next? Are we missing anything? Yes, we are. Let's add a little of this spicy sauce to it. Okay, let's do it. And spicy we go. Woo, that looks good, spicy doesn't it, Daryl? Spicy your life. Oh my goodness, this, the spice of Voila. life. So safe to taste, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Let's do it, come on, hands on, all hands on deck. Let's all taste some. So this is the spicy succulent shrimp. Mmm. Yes. I don't mean all to right. pat, pat you on the back that much, Mark, but you The aroma. <laughs> Folks, if you could just smell what I'm smelling right now. Nice, spicy, buttery, bite it all you want. It's just amazing. We've got the corn on the cob. Let's take a little bit of that. Mmm. It's good. <laughs> I can eat this every day. So folks, here you have it. Everything that you need. It is favor flavor time. time. Yes, it is. And I echo those sentiments. It is favor flavor time. Speaking of which, we have some delectable food offerings right now on the table. Why don't you one by one 
Tell us what we have, Daryl. Okay, starting <clears throat> on the fourth side of me is our famous fried chicken, and that's, again, seasoned with our own in-house blend of seasonings. Um, hopefully, we'll get them on a, store, on a shelf in a store near you pretty soon. And these are our grandma's candy yams. Mm. They are some of the, the community's favorite. <laughs> um, the collard greens are really good. I wish you guys were here so that you can taste it, but if not, you guys come on by 2005 West Jordan, favorite flavor of seafood. Get some of our crawfish and our oh, world famous yeah. mac and cheese and that cornbread, it's buttermilk cornbread. It is delicious. It's to live for. That's the only way to make cornbread with the buttermilk. That's yes. what I'm told. <laughs> At least that's what I'm told. Now you have a little bit of history with Pensacola State College. You earned your GED, right? Yes, ma'am. Ed. And yes, then you took a few classes. Why don't you talk about that? Um, so I graduated PSC in 2008 uh, with my GED and uh, came over and I started in IT, uh, studying to get my uh, IT degree okay. over at your computer place. Yes. But um, just kind of had a few bumps in the road and, you know, working and going to school. So um, I just was hard pressed to take care of my family. And I, I ended up, you know, going to work. Um, and working full time versus staying in school. But thank God that, you know, he still led my path. He still, um, though I didn't do everything perfect, he was still right there with his hand on my life. And he really, really, really um, led the way and um, came away from working on my own to me and my wife setting out and starting Favor Flavor Seafood. Yes. And it's an enjoyment to us. It's an enjoyment to help people in the community. Um, all the employees that we work, that that is more so our, our goal is to, to hire as many people as possible to give an opportunity to somebody that I didn't have. Um, so that's that's the biggest part of Favor Flavor. We love the food, we love to cook. It's our passion, but the biggest part of it is reaching back in the community back. and giving to those people who can't, couldn't give to themselves. That's why we're so glad. We are extremely honored to have you as our physical award sponsor for 2022. And later in the show, you'll see those beautiful awards. But let's go back to Thanksgiving. You did something phenomenal in the community. Talk about that. So um, I have a, a cool friend. She is so incredible. Her name is uh, Sunshine, and she works with Magic 106. And she reached out, and she said, Daryl, look, man, I, I like you guys. I love the food over at Favor Flavor. Me and her do a lot of media together. And she says, I, I just love this place, and, and I want to be a part of this place in some kind of way. And she offered us to do her Magic 106 Thanksgiving giveaway where we fed, uh, I think it was 600 people. We, we cooked, she brought all the food. It was her, um, Sunshine, Michaels, and Booth, uh, attorneys at law. A lot of people that came together in the community. Came together and we put out 600 plates. And we, I mean, just whoever That's wanted great. to eat Thanksgiving dinner, we put it out. And that was a great event. It's gonna go on again next year. Thanks to Sunshine and uh, Michaels and Booth. See you guys next year at Favor Flavor. We'll try to double that number of plates that we gave away last year. That is phenomenal. Yet another great reason to support this amazing business, and we are honored to have them as our 2022 Physical Award sponsor. Daryl, it's been an extreme pleasure having you on the show. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to and work And I can't with wait you. to eat some of this a little bit later. <laughs> All right, folks, as we head to break, we're going to take you back to the 2020 Scholarship Banquet and the smooth sounds of Deborah Hutchinson. Not only is she an exceptional pianist, but her vocals shine in this rendition of Anita Baker's Sweet Love. Sweet Love, hear me calling out your name. I feel no shame, I'm in love. Closer to you, I will be all that you need. Just trust in what we're feeling. Never leave, cause baby, I believe in this love. Sweet love, hear me calling out your name. I feel no shame.
everyone. You just saw the smiling faces of the 2022 African American Memorial Endowment scholarship recipients, including several of the Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins Live Your Dream Scholarship awardees. We'll highlight the rest later in the show. And during this segment, we're taking you back a few years to catch up with one of our 2019 scholarship recipients. I'm excited because I know we're going to be wowed by what we hear. I'd like to welcome Jonathan Stallworth, a Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins Live Your Dream scholarship recipient. He's joined by Dr. John Woods, a faithful volunteer who's worked with us throughout the years. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You all look so sharp. Black Thanks and gold. <laughs> Gotta love it. Let's talk 100 for 100, all right? And as we heard in segment one, Dr. Meadows, about our initiative to provide scholarship funds for deserving students, we have some thanks, right? We have several volunteers that have worked so right. heartily with you. I'm going to name a few. So we have Trace Brown, Tom Ford, Kalia Williams. Why mm -hmm. don't you pick up a little bit where I left and off? Verona was there and uh, we also had um, uh, well Jonathan exactly that, uh, with that, you, right here. that you have here and Brian Brian Sutton and, right yes and then uh, Michelle right Michelle and she Pence. was kind of behind the uh, behind the scenes uh, there and uh, and then we had um, uh, myself and then um, me and then you <laughs> that was right. it that's it yeah. exactly so many thanks to all of our volunteers we love working with this initiative so jonathan back in 2019 we're walking back right, right so right. 2019 you received your wiggins award but guess what your journey has taken you many places talk about that wow it's been an amazing journey um when i look back i was thinking about it just the other day how um, I didn't think I would be at PS PSC, but I had the opportunity to come here and with the Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins scholarship, yes. that was such a blessing. I remember my mom, she went to the mailbox and she said, Jonathan, I got something to share with oh. you. And I said, what is it, mom? And she told me that I was gonna be a recipient of the Dr. Garrett T. Wiggins scholarship. And I remember feeling so blessed and feeling excited because in high school, I was not the ones who were getting the awards all the time. I was the one who was struggling through high school. But to come to college and see a turnaround, it was just an amazing and just being being a part of P Pensacola State has been just been incredible. So what was your major? You've already graduated. So yes, I've already graduated. My uh, major was a bachelor's in business and management with a concentration in human resource management. That is so amazing. And speaking of which, we have a lot of people out there that are working so hard. We're going to take you back again to the 2020 scholarship banquet to our speaker, Rodney Jones. Listen to these impacting words. Because in there, that's where young girls turning tricks on a dime and young girls having babies I ain't lying. Babies having babies, man, this is true. Now y'all tell me how baby gonna take care of baby, man. They ain't gonna know what to do. And what's worse, it's like a curse from one generation to the next, all hooked on food stamps and a welfare check. Now, they don't know that's an addiction, and an addiction is an affliction. This ain't no fiction. This is true. Now, y'all tell me, what we going to do? I don't know, Lord, but I'm going to pray every day that you stay with those in the struggle and who live where hard times is a way of life, and every day full of trouble. Because they pain run deep, Lord. They hurting so they weak, Lord. It's like hell on earth. They feel the heat, Lord, in the ghetto. But life ain't easy, man. You got mama struggling. Daddy's out juggling. Trying to get money any way they can. And even then, ends won't meet. And it's a fact. Every night, some of your kids won't eat in the ghetto. All right, Dr. Woods, you have a special connection mm -hmm. with Rodney Jones. Why don't you talk That's about correct. that? Yeah, so I met uh, Rodney when I was actually working as a, uh, a social studies teacher at an alternative school here in Pensacola. And, uh, and at that time, he had the, the long dreads and, and stuff, but he came and spoke to, uh, to the uh, students there, and he was so dynamic. 
And the neat thing about Rodney is Rodney has a connection because of his upbringing and because of what he went through and some of his experiences. So he connects with the young people. And he was the perfect, in my opinion, the perfect speaker for, for this because he also has made education important in his life. And that's and he talks about that when he when he talked in 2000 and uh, and 20. So he talked about the importance of education. He sure did. Speaking of education, back in 2020 at the banquet, you had a huge role, Jonathan. Right. You're with Tawada English, and near the end of the banquet, we were asking people if they wanted to support the scholarship program. You have been with us, Dr. Woods mm -hmm. and me, for quite some time, back during the banquet, and then when we started 100 for 100 back in 2021. What does this mean to you personally, giving back? You know, this means everything to me. I remember, you know, like I said, when I got this award, and to have the opportunity to be one of the ones who could uh, contribute in helping uh, make this continue to happen. I said I wanted to do it. I wanted to make sure that we had other students who came after me uh, to give awards to like this. And yeah. it's just, it's been an incredible journey to just see the numbers continue to rise every year mm -hmm. as we give more and more recipient scholarships. And so it's been a really a blessing. It's been a blessing and being able to give back. It's always such a awesome. blessing. It really is. And Dr. Woods, your involvement back in 2020 mm -hmm. as well, you must have walked 10 miles in that <laughs> bank, what I'm sure that you did. But you have a special role at Pensacola mm -hmm. State College. You're an employee here. Why don't you tell That's us correct. about that? Yeah, so I work with military veterans and, and help them to be able to prepare for college and be successful in college through the Veterans Upper Bound program. And so that is important because just like the scholarships, I'm investing in their lives and trying to help them uh, with their educational journey and meet their educational goals. That is stellar. Jonathan, there have to be people in your life who have inspired you to go the extra mile. Why don't you share a few examples? First of all, I give honor and glory to God. Um, and then, Dr. Leary, yourself, you really have inspired <laughs> me. Even in this journey through Pensacola State Thank College, you. I never knew the the amazing impact Pensacola State would have on me. But, you know, taking your class and just uh, throughout the years, just it's been such a Thank blessing you. to just have you as a teacher and have other ones like yes. Doc, Miss Carrie, but you guys have been such a blessing. It's been lifelong friends. And so I, I'm really blessed to have participated here at Pensacola State and been a student. I love to say I am an alum of Pensacola State College. And we are so happy to have you. So what would you say to anyone out there, Jonathan Stallworth, who's on the fence? who doesn't know whether or not they're going to apply for a scholarship, what would you tell them? I would say take every opportunity you can and apply. And there are so many scholarships out there who's waiting to give you money. And so use that money, that's free money that you free. don't have to pay for, you know? And you'll have to pay it back. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right. Benefit of being free, right? It's, it's the benefit of being <laughs> right. free, but also you deserve it. And so go for it, use the money and Dr. Woods, sometimes mm -hmm. people wonder about veterans. Can mm -hmm. veterans apply? We have to dispel that myth, correct? Oh, absolutely, that uh, veterans can apply for any of the scholarships uh, here at uh, Pensacola State College. And there are some scholarships that are specifically for veterans themselves, but all the other scholarships that are open up to any student are open up to veterans. And as a follow-up, your involvement with 100 for 100 mm -hmm. and the networking and meeting people, mm -hmm. do you have a personal story in that respect with your efforts yeah. helping with the initiative? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I was able to do, and this is kind of cool because at the same time we were doing this, I had to go through physical therapy. Oh, and okay. so I, uh, on, on an injury that I had. And so my physical therapist, I was talking with uh, with her about it, and she was one of the uh, individuals that provided help. funds and helped us out. Yes. And you really never know how you will impact another person. A smile, a hug, a right. well wishes. Right, guys? That's, That's correct. true. 
you both inspire me oh, so much. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much for all of your hard work and to all of our volunteers. And we definitely want you to apply, folks. Okay, as we pause momentarily, we want to welcome the Inglewood Baptist Church praise team as they sing, You Know My Name. Take a listen. Oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me that I. Hello, everyone. You just saw the smiling faces of the remaining 2022 Dodger Garrett T. Wiggins Live Your Dream Scholarship recipients. What an amazing honor. There were 25 Ames Wiggins awardees. And during this segment, I have the pleasure of welcoming three of them right now. I'm thrilled to introduce Shelby Witherspoon, who was selected for an Ames scholarship. And we also have two Wiggins scholarship recipients, Shantora Grant and Jaisea Rivera. Now I can definitely feel your <laughs> excitement. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know you're psyched, aren't you? So let me start with you, Jaisea. I know that you probably had such a spirit of elation oh, when yeah. you found out. What was your first reaction? Woo! <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm I, feeling the listen, energy. Listen, listen. I got home after a hard day of school and work, man, and I <laughs> opened up my computer. I was scrolling through all my classes, making sure my homework was done, and then it was there. Boom, right in front of me. You have been awarded X amount of dollars, and I was like, yes, it's such a relief. You know, being on my own and being responsible to pay for the college, it's very time consuming and it's very it demands a lot of physical work you know I currently am working two jobs and I go to school full-time what is your major my major is pre-med I want to okay. be I want to be a doctor I have big big dreams in you know the scholarship was live your dream so I can put that money towards my dreams of becoming a doctor and helping out poor kids that is simply amazing so Shantora let's hear your story well, I was very excited because, as Jazaya said, it was very hard. I'm trying to go to school, work full time. I'm a mother of two, also a grandmother. And I'm going back to pursue my bachelor's for business management. So it was very exciting. And I was like, I'm so excited to get that, that scholarship because I was going to have to pay for it out of my own pocket. There are so many amazing backstories, aren't there, Shantora? Yes. A lot of times people are saying, how am I going to do this? And then miraculously, a scholarship is awarded, and it makes you feel sensational. So, Shelby, let's talk about your Ames moment. 
Um, I actually received an email. Um, I got accepted into the EKG program and it's not covered by the Pell Grant mm -hmm. and I'm a single mother too and I work full time every day. So I was trying to figure out how, how I was gonna pay for it and I filled out for a scholarship, well, several different scholarships and I got that one and I was overjoyed. Now, Jai said in the first segment, we found out that there are over 200 PSC scholarships and it takes time to fill out that application, but not very long, but we have to be motivated. Oh, yeah. What motivated you to apply? It was um, honestly out of necessity. It was out of necessity. Um, if I had the situation where I could just afford it on my own and have somebody pay me, or have somebody pay for me to go to school, that's one thing. But um, as I was saying earlier, being on my own, having two jobs, practically working full time, it, it, it's, a it, lot. it it's a lot, it drove me, it really did. So it's like, yeah, I can be in debt, I can take out student loans, or I can do something, be proactive in my life, do something that's gonna help me better myself and my future. And even though, you know, it might not be million dollar scholarship it's something that I can use to help me in help me achieve my goal of financial security speaking of which I know that there are some people who have inspired you why don't you give us an example of one of those people I really wanna <laughs> I really want to talk about my mother Yes. my mother is my biggest biggest <sighs> she is the reason why I am here Listen, I had a single mother. She had five kids, and she was able to do it all on her own. She went to college. She went to school. She, she worked full time to support all of us, and that is just something like it, it, it makes me re it really humbles me and to the point where I'm just like, I have nothing to, to ever complain about because when, when, when I was a little kid and I couldn't do anything for myself, she was doing the work. She was breaking her back so I could have food on the table, food in my mouth, clothes on my back a shelter, a home to be loved. And you know, I'll always I'll always be so thankful and so appreciative of her for doing that for me. And you know, that and, and, and I just want to be able to give back. And that's yes. the thing. She always told me to be a positive person. You speak positivity, and you you do small acts of kindness throughout the day, anything, it can really, really help change and inspire somebody else's life. So that's what I want to do. I want to be a beacon of hope. I want to be a positive figure. I want to give back to people in our in our communities that are struggling because I've been there, I've done that. I don't wanna make it to the top and then forget where I came from, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. So what I'm thinking about, Shelby, is when you all took that group photo with Dr. Meadows and you were actually holding your physical awards and the elation on his face, and I know that he mentioned how much he loves you and he's so proud of you. From your perspective, regarding your life? Were there any stumbling blocks that you had to overcome to make it to where you are today? Yes. Um, I didn't have like nobody pushing me to go to school or be better or anything like that. So I went to college, I mean, yeah, I went to college straight out of high school and I dropped out. So, I mean, over time I ended up having kids and it was hard getting back into college. Like a lot of stuff had changed. So it was hard getting through it. I failed a class or two and had to retake them. It's hard. It was but hard. what made you get back? What made you come back? I have the tiger. Something <laughs> made you come back. Um, just wanting to be a better role model for my kids. Um, you can always tell them, go to school, go to college. And you can tell them that, but if they see you doing it, Sometimes I want to be like my mama. My mama did it. I can do it. So that's what. That's what keeps yeah, you going. That's what keeps me but going. But you said even when the couple of classes didn't go well, you kept on going. Shantora, isn't that right? Yes. We have to keep on going. Those yes. obstacles may present themselves, but we don't have to harness those obstacles, do we? No. Um, get knocked down, get back up. It's just like riding a bike. If you mm. fall off, you get back on. You remember how to do it. You just got to do it. So what is your program of study? Um, business management. I'm going back for my bachelor's. And what are your long-term goals? I would love to continue to work at Sacred, where I'm at now, and um, run an office. So tell us specifically what you do there. It's very interesting. 
I am the data entry for the bariatric program at the hospital, which is the weight loss program. Um, I make sure that I keep all the doctors credentialing so he can That's stay good. accredited for the program. Now, Shelby, back to you, because I must know what your program of study is. I know our audience wants to know that as well, so tell us. <laughs> I am currently in the EKG program. All right. Um, I am 24 credits shy of having my associate in business, though, so I'm going to get back to that as well. And I know that you will do it. Jaisea, <laughs> back to you. Okay. One of the things I really admire about you is your tenacity. You have a lot of energy and it's infectious. You got to, it's you have rubbing to. off on <laughs> all you of us. We can feel it. So if you were a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. which I believe that you already are, what would you tell to anyone out there who's saying, Well, I don't know if I can do this? this is going on, or maybe another obstacle has presented itself, what would you say to encourage them? Um, what would I say? Okay. So I listen to a lot, a lot of rap music, and that's very inspirational to me. And I, I just want to use some quotes from two of my favorite artists that I listen to. J. Cole once said, they say anything's possible, you got to dream like you've never seen obstacles. Okay. And that's a quote that I live by personally, in um, another quote is from Juice World. He said, just go and do it. So, <laughs> I mean, th th those are just um, my, my, my driving force too, you know what I mean? I just hear those words and if these people made it and they're telling me that I can do it, then I probably can do it. So that's what I would say. And I will say that many of us have obstacles in our lives and overcoming them. That's the beauty of it all, right, Shantora? Yes, it is. I've had obstacles in my life as well. Um, I graduating in 92 and I went to school. It wasn't quite fit for me. I guess I had to mature to be able to be able to go back to school and be motivated. So now I'm motivated and I want to show my children that, hey, it's never too late to go back to school. So I know that there is someone who has motivated you. Give us an example of at least one person. My kids. Anything specifically that they may say, mommy, you can do this or anything like that. Do you have a special quote? A saying from them. Uh, Mama, you got this. <laughs> <I like laughs> Mama, that. you got this. <laughs> you sure do. Yeah. So on the down days, I tell you, studying and doing your papers yes. and, the, and the work, that work-life balance, how do you stay focused? It's hard, but I'm a very spiritual person, so mm -hmm. when I feel like I'm giving up, I just turn to God Amen. and pray. Yes, your faith keeps you going. Yes. So Shelby, I know I can feel it right there from <laughs> you as well, because let's just say this, scholarships are awarded every single year. But sadly, with some scholarships, people don't apply. That's why it's so important for us to share this with you. We want you to apply for PSC scholarships. Do it right, do I it. say. Do it. Yes. You've got to you do, got it. do it. You have to. Because you would always have that question in your mind, Shelby, would have, could have, mm -hmm. should have, but you wouldn't know. So take that first step. Make sure that you're doing it. But I will say this, giving back. Let's talk about endeavors outside of your educational journeys. So Jaisea, anything that you do, and I know you're working two jobs, oh, but yeah. do you have any volunteer efforts or anything that you're in, affiliated with outside uh, of Oh uh, yeah, definitely want to shout out the Navarre Beach Marine Science Station. Um, I graduated from Navarre High School and they have a really awesome program where they just give back to the community. They host a lot of events on the beach and I've been a volunteer with them and for them since I've graduated. So go check them out. They do some really fantastic things. They have a, um, an autism event coming up this April, I believe. Sounds great. Well, Shantora, what about you? Anything outside of education that interests you? Maybe volunteer work? I don't do any volunteer work because there's not enough hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Busy schedule. Yes. Yeah. But I do help out with um, helping my daughter with my grandson and doing stuff for her. So that's a lot of volunteer hours to help her so she can grow and also become successful in what she's doing as well. And helping children with homework, tutor. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> help me. <laughs> yes, help me. So Shelby, what about you? I don't volunteer, um, but I am a full-time mom, 
And I mean, my efforts to raising my kids will help the community. But I will say yeah. this, we give back in mm -hmm. so many ways. What you do with your children, with your families, yes, you are giving back 10 times over, oh, yeah. right, yeah. Isaiah? Yes, You're molding them, their ideas are being shaped, they're looking at what you do, oh, yeah. your mm -hmm. accomplishments, and then they're pondering in their minds, will I follow in their footsteps? And more than likely, yes, yes. because they can do it, right, Jaisea? Exactly, and they're gonna go right back into society once you guys have done your awesome jobs as mothers, and they're gonna be productive members and contribute and promote more positivity into the world. And you know, with the current affairs, you know how negative it looks right now. Mm -hmm. So any small act of kindness, any bit of positivity, I mean, it goes a long way, and they're getting that from you guys. You guys are their heart. You're their, you are their foundation. I wish I could have had all three of you <laughs> in some of my classes. You have really inspired me. Mm -hmm. And we learn something new every day, don't we, Shantora? Yes. We, do. we don't know it all. Education is a journey. It's a continuum. We keep learning more and more each and every day. So, Jaisea, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Is there an adjective that you can think of that describes you? An adjective. An adjective. Creative. Love it. How about you, Shantora? Motivation. All right. I am very dependable. Dependable. Mm. And there you have it. Many thanks to all three of you. I know I'm feeling good, and I hope you are, too. <laughs> Folks, as we close the show, I want to thank all of our guests for joining us. And I must say, it's always a pleasure to honor our Pensacola State College students. As a final note, for more information regarding the PSC Foundation, you can log on to foundation.pensacolastate.edu. I'm Ramika Vincent Leary. Thanks for watching. Remember to keep it locked in right here on WSRE PBS for the Gulf Coast.